Hi Pete, it's James at Reedish Motorsport. Thanks for bringing your M3 to us for the Comrade Barons, amongst the other work as well. Um, we're going to show you a video now, what goes on during that process, and talk to you about plastic gauge measuring, show you some examples, which is a really important part of the bearing process. But first of all, you're probably wondering how the car gets to this condition, because as you can see, it's a lot more disassembled than when it first came in. And that's because we have to take off under trays, reinforcement plates, disconnect wishbones from your subframe, then remove your subframe and steering rack assembly in one piece, place that safely on the ground, whilst we then install our special tool subframe, which is one we bought years ago, and we cut the middle section out of ours. So that gives us a left-hand side and a right-hand side subframe, which we call our special tools. That allows the engine to sit on engine mounts on a subframe and load its weight into the chassis legs like it would do normally. And then we don't need to hang, swing, or suspend the engine from above on the wings with those red bars that some people use. And obviously with the middle missing out of our subframe, we can get the sumps off of the engine nice and easy and then later on put them back on. Plus it's very safe for working under because we're holding the engine in its normal way especially when we're turning the crank here to get the comrades into each correct position. So once the sump is off, we take the oil pump off and a few more pipes. Then we get to see the inside of the engine and the crankshaft and the comrades for the very first time. Just in case you're not aware, the crankshaft is the main rotating heart of the engine, lives in the lower part of the engine called the block and it fits from this front line here and it goes through to the back line of the engine block just there. And then that's your flywheel the new one, which is bolted to the back of the crankshaft. And then there's your gearbox going on towards the middle of the car down there. And then wrapping around the crankshaft, you've got the items known as con rods. Let's take this one here for an example. So its official name is connecting rod because it does connect things together. It connects the pistons up there to the crankshaft down here. You can see the underside of one of your pistons just over there. And then that silver item going across is the gudgeon pin, which slides through the small end of the comrod. Down here, this is nicknamed the big end of the comrod. And this is where the comrod bearings are stored. Just gonna show you an example of what an old comrod bearing looks like, size-wise. So they're semicircular. there's two halves that make up one. So another one sits like that and opposes it, which makes it a full circle bearing. And although the comrod looks like one piece, they're all made up of two pieces. Um, and uh, there's an invisible join line just between those stamped numbers and the upper part is known as the comrod and this lower part down here is called the cap and those two parts of the comrod are held together with comrod bolts which are these items here these are the new bmw bolts they're a very special bolt they have to be replaced because they're a stretch bolt and there's a very special torque procedure for those because it's not just torquing them once it's um torque to yield which is basically where they achieve full tensile strength when they've been torqued through a cycle and the BMW's instructions that we follow are um, 5 newton meters then 30 newton meters and then a 105 degree turn that's cycle one then you undo the bolt and then carry that again cycle two then you undo the bolt and carry it again cycle three that's then fully torqued and at that point then uh, it's achieved full tensile strength so then we paint mark the heads with a green pen once we've carried out that process and then work our way along the engine. We tend to start at the front of the engine which is cylinder one up here and work our way towards the rear and that's where we are now on the very last one so this is where we like to do a video to come and show you what uh, what we're doing at this stage and um, explain a little bit more about the crankshaft because you can see it in more detail now because as with all the others, we've uh, taken off the caps, undone the bolts, taken off the caps, taken out the old bearings, and then installing the new bearings. But it's not just a case of installing them and leaving them, it's a case of plastic gauge measuring every single one to make sure the clearance is correct and within the BMW tolerance. So this part of the crankshaft is called the journal. It's a highly polished and precision machine part which has to stay clean and free from debris and scratches and things like that. And that's because the bearings actually rotate around that part of the crankshaft journal, but they never touch it. Instead, they float on a film of oil, which is known as a hydrodynamic wedge. And that film of oil is critical for the health of the bearing, the crank, the comrod, and therefore the entire engine. And that film of oil we speak about is so small that the human eye can't see it. That's why you have to use a special system to measure it. And um, BMW use plastic gauge. It comes from BMW under a part number. Um, there you go, that's a better, I had the reflection on it. You can see it's this red piece of plastic here. So how it works is that um, you take a small section of a new piece of plastic gauge, which is this stuff here. They, they're all exactly the same length when they're in the pack and um, they're very soft and flexible. It's designed specifically for measuring engine bearing clearances. So you take a small section of that off, which is about the width of the, the bearing. You install that on the journal, then the new bearing set and the cap and the bolts, and you carry out the torque process, which basically squashes that piece of plastic and that mimics real world working conditions. And then you remove the bolts, the cap, the bearings, and you look at what was a tiny piece of thin plastic. You see how far it's been spread. 
and then you use a plastic gauge measuring card, which is here, to work out what clearance you've got. So you've got lots of red blocks, you've got tighter clearance at the top, looser ones at the bottom, and these numbers on the left are a measurement in value in millimetres. The BMW tolerance is 0.03 to 0.07, so we have to match up to see what one we are seeing is the closest. And on this one, it's coming out as 0.05, which is great because that's right in the middle range of the value, clearance value, 0.03 to 0.07. And yours have been extremely consistent. All of them have been 0.05, which is great. And that's what we come to expect, to be honest, when using the ACL race bearings. And more specifically, this is the Reedish custom mix set where we use a H and a HX blend of bearings. We do that for two reasons. One, because uh, we're able to fine tune or, or create an optimum oil clearance if we find uh, an issue, if a car has already had a replacement comrod or if it's had a crank that's been polished or if it's just unfortunate and it's something we call a tolerant stack engine. Now in yours, we didn't find any problems, so we didn't need to mix and match uh, like that. We were able to just run them in our normal process and they've all worked out fine at 0.03. And the other reason we do that, the ACL Race Reedish Custom Mix set with a H and a HX blend of bearings, uh, is because we're able to offer and introduce a minute amount more oil clearance to this area. And we are talking minute. Something that's probably not gonna make any difference in the real world but on paper probably in wheel well does improve it and it's something we've been doing for years and it's sort of a recognized process on the ACL race catalog um, and that's because the BMW S engines as in the M power engines seem to be sort of worldwide known as very tight clearances on the Comrade Barons and um, one of the reasons that is why they seem to wear prematurely when you compare it to another manufacturer where you don't hear of Comrade Baron failures so um, for example, if we use a BMW bearing in this region, we'd commonly find around about a 0.038 um, clearance, which is more to the tighter end of the scale at 0.03 and um, limit. Uh, so by using a, uh, a different set of bearings and doing a mix and match clearance value, we are able to introduce a minute amount more clearance and get around about 0.05, which we have done in this case, but still stay well away from the maximum value, which in this case is a 0.07. So that's a little bit about what we do, how we do it, and why we do it. Um, and I should say as well, it's not just this one that we've measured, even though I've just videoed that one, we've measured every single one, all six of yours, and we've done that on every single engine we've ever done Conrad Barons on full stop. Uh, we just don't video everyone because otherwise it'd be very repetitive and well over an hour long showing the same thing. So um, all the data we've gathered from the other cylinders, the torque values for the bolts and the clearance value for the bearings, we record that on a sheet as we go along and we'll give you a copy of that at the end of the process for your car's records. We call it a Comrade bearing data sheet. So we'll clean that piece of plastic age off now. We'll then, like we've done off all the others, we'll then lubricate the journal and bearing assembly for the last time, install that half of the bearing, the cap, the bolts, carry out the final torque process, paint mark the head screen, and then that's all six of them done. Then obviously we need to rebuild in reverse order. So we'll be installing a new O-ring on the dipstick up here. Interestingly, we found uh, there was a washer missing from this dipstick. So um, there has been previously a little bit of oil leaking from around here. So we keep these washers in stock. So we'll put a new one on there. Um, we'll also, <coughs> excuse me, we'll also be installing a new sieve gasket for the bottom of the sump, which goes in here for one of the pickup pipes. A new genuine BMW sump gasket will go on also with the BMW dry bond 1209 sealant which is needed to be put on any joint in sections from the iron block to the aluminium timing case over there and there and then two at the back as well for the rear main cover there and there and then the sump gasket goes on the new one um, then the sump's on and once the engine's oil tight we'll be filling with Castrol 1060 M power engine oil and also a genuine BMW oil filter kit and then when the car is further complete with um, the subframe and steering rack assembly back on, we'll fill with the new steering fluid and also the sealing rings for the high pressure pipes that go onto the rack over here on the right hand side. We'll check the, obviously, check the engine oil level and then start the vehicle for the first time, the engine. We'll keep the car up in the air on the lift like it is now. We'll be stood underneath it, checking it, monitoring it, looking, listening, making sure everything's fine. Whilst it's warming up to temperature for say 15 minutes or so it takes, then we'll check the oil level again. And once we're happy the car is fully reassembled and complete, we'll then be able to go out and do our standard 12 mile road test that we do on all vehicles that have been with us for Comrod bearing work. So that's a little bit about the Comrade bearing process just there. Hopefully you find that interesting. Um, we're also, I have done and changed the engine mounts as well. We've got new engine mounts up here. Uh, one for the right hand side of the engine, one for the left hand side of the engine as well. 
Um, and, uh, and I know you are going for a few other things as well. So you're going to be having the powder coated new front subframe, which makes sense because obviously that area is off. Um, the steering rack is still on that subframe, but we can then disassemble the steering rack from that subframe and put it onto your new powder coated subframe. We'll put new bolts in there as well, because as you can see, your old ones are obviously corroded. So we'll put new subframe bolts in, new nuts for the engine mounts, new nuts for the wishbones that go through this hole just here, and the new potentiometer system for um, the Xenon headlight leveling system, which hangs off that bracket there. We'll sort all that out for you. Also, I can show you in this video the old bearings, which are interesting for a few reasons. But first of all, I should say, as soon as they come out, we use a Sharpie pen. We write a number on them, which identifies what cylinder they've come from, cylinders one to six. But because there's two bearings per journal, we further identify them with a letter. So L means lower, U means upper. Um, and it's common that the upper ones do fare a little bit worse because the upper bearings sit in the engine like that. And then during the combustion cycle, you've got the sort of downwards compression force of the piston pushing the comrod and therefore this upper bearing into the crankshaft journal. And the only thing stopping it hitting the crankshaft journal is that very, very thin film of oil. And there is much more contact chance of the upper bearing making contact with the, upper, with the crankshaft journal. Hence why the uppers seem to wear a little bit worse than, um, than others. And that's not unusual. That's sort of a better way to find it because it means it's wearing in a, in a normal manner then. Now these aren't the very first bearings that uh, came with the car. This car has had the BMW recall. How do we tell that? Well, they're part number stamped on the back of them. When the S54 came out and all through production, they ran with a part number bearing called 437 and 438. Now these bearings are stamped 439 and 440, which are exactly the ones that you buy right now from BMW if you want to put BMW bearings back in. These were the recall bearings and are currently still the bearings that only BMW offer at the moment. So that means it's had its recall um, and therefore they've been done before. I don't know what mileage these were done at. The car is now on 108,000. I couldn't say whether these that were done at 10,000 or 50,000. I don't know if you've got any records in your in your um, history, but these ones have had the recall. So there's a bit of info there about uh, the fact that they these are, haven't had the entire 108,000 miles of wear on them. Um, but they are showing a little bit of wear, certainly not horrific but the, clearly there's something going on there so if you take a lower one let's take one lower which is very uniform in its color quite gray um, it's got rotational lines or striation lines on them and that's to be expected but this is not far off visually looking like what it was when it first went into the engine all those years ago then you've got like a stage one sort of uh, wear which is say let's say four upper this um this sort of olive green patch here between my fingers that's lead which has been exposed in the bearing where this gray material is worn away you then see in patches of lead which are being exposed and then when you wear through the lead you will then eventually start exposing copper which is just starting to show on the edges on the inboard edge of that one there six and the outboard edge there is a longer stripe of copper there on two upper and copper is the last sacrificial layer before the bearing starts delaminating and breaking up now you were uh, miles and miles away from that i don't know how far it would have taken for it to get to that stage but you almost don't want it to get to that stage because that's when it, then it's going to put excessive amounts of metal metallic particles into the engine oil stream and through the the vanos the pumps and all sorts of things like that you know you want them to be having somewhere on them to sort of quantify your reason to doing them which they have uh, but not finding excessive wear that it actually damages the crank or requires other work so you know it's a good outcome really if you think of it like that so that's a little bit about the old bearings um, here is the uh, washer the new one that we're going to put on the dipstick o-ring so on the dipsticks they should have a washer which sits on top of the that's the new dipstick o-ring which will install we install those new on all of them um, but uh, should have a washer like that and yours didn't have a washer it was missing so we keep these in stock so we'll put a new one of those on that solves that little problem that we found as well so that's a little bit about the old bearings and the process and how we do it hopefully you enjoyed that video and uh, it goes to show what goes on during the Redish Motorsport Comrod bearing work um, we're going to give you six pieces of evidence to show they've been done meticulously here with us at Readers. So that's this video that you're watching now, which is a great document to show how they've been done. Um, that also will be accompanied by a selection of digital pictures, which show the car and the engine in key stages of the repair. Plus, we'll give you old parts back in the Readers Motorsport box. 
and um, paperwork wise we'll be presenting you with a Conrad Bearing data sheet plus the professionally printed invoice and if you've got your service book available we'll stamp that with our Readish Motorsport Conrad Bearing stamp. So it just leaves me to say thank you very much for bringing your car and choosing Readish Motorsport. Um, I know there's lots of specialists that offer this type of repair so thank you for choosing us and taking the time to bring your car to us. Please feel free to share the video on pictures once we send those over to you. We really do enjoy documenting the process just as much as actually doing the work itself. So um, yeah feel free to use this video and pictures whether you're on Facebook groups, forums, WhatsApp groups or if it's just friends and family you know you've got our permission to use it how you wish and uh, once the car is complete and fully back together road tested and ready for collection then we'll give you a call to let you know. Thank you very much.